I wanted to come on here and give a little update on the Amber Spradlin murder case going on in Prestonsburg in Floyd County, Kentucky. Um, I wish I had more to offer. There hasn't been any arrest as of right now. The family, the family is uh, continuing the um, justice for Amber Page, where they people share their thoughts and opinions, and the family will give updates as they can. And they are saying that they do believe that an arrest is pending and coming soon. It wasn't very long ago that the cousin um, posted that they had been contacted, that the uh, autopsy report was back. They didn't share anything except for that she said she didn't know if she should share this information or if she was supposed to, but that Amber did fight. This leads me and others to believe that she did have defensive wounds when originally it was said that she didn't. And I don't know who would have had that information if the autopsy report had not been had not come back yet. But I had read somewhere on one of the pages that she did not have defensive wounds. So I'm taking that to mean that there were defensive wounds, that there was maybe skin under her fingernails, broken fingernails, hair in her hands, or something of that nature showing that she was trying to fight back against this person. This would say that she did not die very instantly. This makes this even more damning to the murderer, in my opinion. And I hope that the jury will also see it that way when the time comes, if it ever does. Because, like I said, no one has been arrested. I can say this. The um, Floyd County Judge Executive, a, a judge executive is a judge that is a is elected by the people to represent the county as kind of their physical court leader, meaning money-wise. He, he's asking um, for a special prosecutor in Amber's uh, case, which is odd to me because there hasn't even been an arrest yet, so I'm questioning, does he feel like that there... Um, I'm not sure what his motive is in doing that. I, I don't know. I've checked out a couple of different web pages trying to find what I can find out about it. This is from Mountaintop Media. This was dated September the 8th. Floyd County Judge Executive Robbie Williams is asking Attorney General Daniel Cameron to appoint a special prosecutor in the case involving the murder of Amber Spradlin. This whole thing comes down to the reason why the public, well, one of the reasons why the public are so outraged and up in arms over this is the 911 calls. There, it was reported that a 911 call was made earlier in the morning and um, the someone got on the phone and said, we don't need help. Um, Whoever had called 911 reported a drunk person. This is what was told. This is what, you know, I, they haven't released the 911 calls that I'm aware of, but what people are saying is that someone called 911 and said, we need help here. There's a drunk person here. They, you know, we want them um, out of the house. And someone else, uh, according to public opinion was Dr. McKinney got on the phone and said, no, we don't need any help. We've got it under control. So no one responded. A few hours later, it was reported that another 911 call was made. Did at any point he say, you know what, she was here all night with my family, my friends, whoever my other guests were. I was aware that she was here. I was here when she arrived at my home. Um, but no, it sounded as though he was saying, hey, I just woke up and come downstairs and here lays this dead girl in my home. It's, it's very twisted. And 
hopefully in time when this all comes out in court and an arrest is finally made, we will get the real details of this. So it just goes on to say, in his letter to Daniel Cameron's office, Williams says McKinney's connections to local officials and the lack of an arrest nearly three months later have fueled public skepticism on the investigation. There is too much at stake for Amber's family and our community, Williams said. Everyone must have complete confidence that those involved will be prosecuted, convicted, and sentenced to the maximum penalties. I believe the timely appointment of a special prosecutor to assume jurisdiction over this case will provide needed reassurance. So I think what he's saying is that the prosecutor who would be prosecuting this case cannot be trusted here. The family, uh, there's a post that the cousin has made on the Justice for Amber page that says Amber's family stands firmly behind Brent Turner and the Kentucky State Police. We have all the confidence in their abilities and their integrity. So Brent Turner would be the, con he, he is the um, Floyd County, pro he, he's the pro he would be the prosecutor in this case. Um, so Robbie Williams, the physical court judge, the judge executive, He's asking Daniel Cameron, the Kentucky Attorney General, to appoint a special prosecutor because he doesn't have any confidence for some reason in Brent Turner. But the family wants, they, they say that they, you know, have good confidence in Brent Turner prosecuting this case. So now this was dated August the 27th. This is from the cousin. The autopsy is back. We are not allowed to comment. The prosecutor and the lead detective are in contact with us. We are confident the evidence will be processed and changes, charges will be filed and arrests will be made. We are looking at possibly two more months. It really upsets me when I read people proclaiming it's a cover-up and that nothing will be done. The Kentucky State Police cannot reveal their findings, but I promise they are working on this. I've researched previous Kentucky State Police news releases, and they don't name names, so the McKinneys are not getting preferential treatment. If I thought they were doing something wrong, I would be screaming about it. So that was her update. I'm just going through and reading through some of what's been posted. Floyd County Commonwealth Attorney Brent Turner has weighed in on Floyd County Judge Executive Robbie Williams' request that a special prosecutor be appointed. As you know, the County Judge Executive's office has absolutely nothing to do with any criminal investigation being conducted by the Kentucky State Police and my office, Turner said. You have zero knowledge about the investigation or the tremendous amount of work that's been done. Turner, who is the prosecuting attorney, notes that Williams did not consult with his office or Amber Spradlin's family prior to sending this letter. He also says that both he and the family are opposed to any attempt to appoint a special prosecutor. The family contacted me today and advised me that you did not consult at all with them about your request, Turner wrote. Further, they have stated that they are completely opposed to any such request and will be asking the Attorney General's office to deny your attempt to change prosecutors in the case. In fact, your request has caused additional stress and worry to the family because it is their desire that I handle this case. He further says the family blames Williams for... Now, I don't know, you know, I, I'll just say this is an opinion here. He further says the family blames Williams for Amber Spradlin's death. 
As you are fully aware, the family of Amber Spradlin has obtained legal counsel and intends to sue you personally over your decision to move the 911 center away from the Kentucky State Police. In fact, they have stated many times publicly and privately to you that they blame you for Amber's death. You have even authorized the expenditure of tens of thousands of taxpayers' dollars to defend yourself in this civil suit. The only thing we can conclude is that you have made this unilateral request against the family's wishes in a pathetic attempt to gain some political advantage or rehabilitate your tarnished image. So it was his decision or his request to take 911 away from the Kentucky State Police, turn it over to the Prestonsburg City Police. This is the reason why the family believes that this the failure on the part of 911 to react to this phone call. Had they gone out there that night when that first call was made, even though someone got on the phone and said, no, everything's under control, had they dispatched someone and someone went on out there that night, could Amber have been saved? Was she already attacked at that point? Here's a little bit more. This was dated one week ago. This is from Lexington 18, LEX 18, from Lexington, Kentucky. Family releases more information about the 911 call made hours before Amber Spradlin's death. This was dated August the 30th. In the months since 38-year-old Amber Spradlin was stabbed to death in Floyd County, Rumors and theories have swirled about who might have killed her. Spradlin's family says she was stabbed 11 times in the head, face, and neck. From the beginning, one of the biggest questions surrounding Spradlin's death has been about the 911 call that was said to have been made from the home hours before she was found dead. No one responded to the call, and the family and others in the community have questioned why. Now, Amber's cousin... Dr. Debbie Hall has been able to listen to that 911 call. The phone call was not about Amber, and it was not made by Amber, she said, but it was still information in the phone call that I feel, had it been anywhere else, they would have responded. Someone would have at least gone out on a welfare check. Hall said that the call was made about a man in the home who was drunk and bleeding profusely perhaps from a fall. She said that in the call, someone else can be heard taking the phone and saying that they had the situation under control. Even if the call wasn't about Amber, Hall said she believes if officials had responded to check it out, it could have made a difference. Hall said she's confident state police will make an arrest but that right now investigators are waiting on DNA and other evidence. I'm on the Justice for Amber page quite often, and every time I read someone's post that this is being covered up or swept under the rug or that Kentucky State Police is not doing their job, it's really upsetting to me, she said. I do feel that the Kentucky State Police is doing a good job. How says she understands why people have questions. She fought, she said. She fought. That was not something that was just seconds and done. She fought. So just like I said earlier, this says that this was a ongoing stabbing, 11 stabs to her head, face, and neck. For those of you new to this story who might not have heard this, I made a couple of videos about this case and in the press conference that the Hall, that Debbie Hall and her family did, she said that Amber was stabbed through her voice box, right in her um, larynx, in her throat, and it went all the way through the back of her neck. Um, 
she was stabbed underneath her cheekbone in an upward motion behind her eye and that the knife broke out broke off in her head inside of her head the fact that her cousin Debbie Hall says she fought this was not just uh, seconds she's saying the first stab didn't kill her the second stab didn't kill her because they stabbed her 11 times so at some point she stopped fighting and um, I think this was so upsetting to so many people Hall said we just want answers the community continues to wait for answers okay here it is this was posted on the Justice for Amber page on August the 9th, so just around a month ago. Part of this article released today in the Floyd County Times and Chronicle. I asked Bartley about the call that Dr. McKinney made to him that morning. Bartley confirmed that Dr. McKinney did call him that morning several hours after the 911 call. However, he did not specify which 911 call, the first or the second. I asked the nature of the call. The Office of the Floyd County Attorney, Attorney Client Communication. This is Keith Bartley, dated July 11, 2023. RE Threat of Litigation. Now, he writes this to the magistrates and to the judge executive, Robbie Williams. I was hoping to discuss the threat, express, or implied of litigation against the county regarding the events surrounding the murder of Amber Spradlin. So, there is a lot of information, and quite frankly, misinformation being circulated throughout the county. My thoughts, in part, are based upon the information known to me or made public by various people about the events of June the 18th, 2023. First, it should be said that the decision to move the 911 call center from the Kentucky State Police Post to the Prestonsburg Police Department was within the authority of the court, and even though the contract to do so was prepared by a non-lawyer, it still has a measure of protection built into it for the county, physical court, and physical court members. So what they're saying is he's letting them know that they should be okay. They should be protected by any litigation. Second, you should know that there are multiple defenses to provide litigation against the county. So basically, he's just telling them, get prepared to cover your butts because the family's coming for you and um, we have to make sure we're protected. I think he probably, I'm, I'm surprised that they haven't also asked for a change of venue, even though no arrest has yet been made. They're preparing their defense already and not just the defense of the murderer who it's my understanding that uh, an attorney was already hired from Pike County to represent the McKinney's. Now, this was something that was also posted on the Justice for Amber page. As the investigation into the brutal murder of Amber Spradlin continues, there has been a lot of speculation and political jockeying for supremacy. I have discovered some information and will attempt to clear up some issues. This is the article written by Jeff Vanderbeck from the Floyd County Chronicle. And he just goes on to say there were two phone call two nine one one calls made that morning of june eighteenth, twenty twenty three. The first one came in at around six AM and the second one was at around ten AM. According to reports, the first one mentioned a drunk person who the caller wanted out of the house. And according to reports, the 911 dispatch operator asked all the right questions, at which time the dispatch operator advised his supervisor to review the call, and the supervisor determined that there was no emergency. 
so no law enforcement officer was dispatched. So where it gets sticky is that what happened between the first and second call as well as subsequent letters from the county attorney to the physical court. I have confirmed that there were two calls prior to Dr. McKinney calling 911. Now see, they're saying that before McKinney called 911 at around 10 a.m. to report this dead body in his home, he called Prestonsburg Police Chief. Now, we now know that not only did he call Prestonsburg Police Chief, but he also called Keith Bartley, the Prestonsburg attorney, the, the county attorney. The Prestonsburg Police Chief resigned within a week or so after this murder. Um, and a lot of speculation is people, people, some people have even gone as far as to say that he went to the home that day. There was even rumors circulating that he was actually there at the home the night that this all took place. His name has not been mentioned. Like I said, there's one other name that has yet to be made public that I'm aware of. The family may know who it is. I don't know. Or it may be something that I have overlooked. But some people did say that he was there at the house that night and others said, well, he... They called, McKinney called him, so he went right over there. Um, it was also mentioned that this man's ex-wife, this Dr. McKinney's wife or ex-wife, was at the home before the police arrived. Many people are speculating that the murderer is either her son, the son, Dr. McKinney's son, or the other young man, who was a son in theory, like a son in theory to them. They, you know, treated him as, as a family member. The reason being is that she would have been trying to protect one of these two young men by going there and removing evidence. This is, a, this is talked about on the Justice for Amber page. I'm not saying that she did this. I'm repeating what I've read, and I would love... For someone to um, talk more about that and maybe that will come out when, when and if this is ever prosecuted so I do not know the nature of the call to the police chief but if you find a dead body in your house and the first call you make is to the police chief that's very peculiar the chief resigned a few days later and this writer, Jeff Vanderbeck, says, I give him a lot of credit for that. Subsequently, after the first call, the authorities arrived, and I would imagine that an inspection determined the area was a crime scene. But how, how many, if Amber Spradlin, let's assume, let's go, I, I'm just throwing out my own theories here. Let's assume that the first 911 call was about Amber, even though her name was not mentioned. Someone is here and they're bleeding profusely. Could she still have been alive in that moment? Is this the reason why the doctor gets the phone and says, Oh no, don't come over. Everything's fine. We don't need anybody. Let's just imagine for a minute that 911 did respond. She could have... I don't even want to speculate that she would have survived such a brutal attack, but it's possible. But at least, maybe, if they had gone there, they would have had time to sit everybody down. Nobody would have had time to come into the home and remove any kind of evidence or attempt any kind of cover-up. So, you know, this is... This is the cause for the family to be up in arms about 911. On July 11th, County Attorney Keith Bartley sent a letter to the physical court explaining how he wanted to meet the court about the threat of civil litigation. The county chose to cancel the contract with the Kentucky State Police for 911 and have the dispatch taken over by the city of Prestonsburg. 
which Keith Bartley, the county attorney, was against. And he did speak out in the meeting about this and speak out against this. Um, according to Judge Executive Robbie Williams, Floyd County has always had an issue with 911. That's not because he has a beef with the state police, because they too are strapped for cash and understaffed. Bartley then goes on to say it's the defense that the county did not receive the call, did not make the decision to request Kentucky State Police or the Sheriff's Department to respond, did not have any input. So basically he's just trying to cover the county and say the county had nothing to do with this. The call that was the city, the city of Prestonsburg basically dropped the ball when it came to sending someone out to the house that night. I don't know if it says anywhere in this that Bartley mentioned to them that he had actually gotten a phone call. I called Bartley and asked for a copy of the letter and he said that he could not give it to me because of attorney-client privilege. However, if I wanted a copy, the judge or one of the magistrates could give me a copy. I asked Bartley about the call that Dr. McKinney made to him that morning and Bartley confirmed that Dr. McKinney did call him that morning, several hours after he called 911. However, he did not say if that was the first or the second 911 call. I asked the nature of that call from McKinney to Bartley, and he said that McKinney asked him for advice on hiring a lawyer, to which Bartley gave him the name of a lawyer. Bartley told me that the lawyer was McKinney's college buddy, but I'm being told that that's not the case and that the lawyer is actually Keith Bartley's college buddy. He being giving, giving legal advice to a person seeking counsel in what clearly may be his own defense case. And since Bartley gave him advice about a lawyer, what prompted that decision? Why did he not tell him he couldn't discuss it? Um... So I don't know. That's that's pretty much where I'll leave that part of the story. So I, all I can say is that as of right now, September the 10th, 2023, almost three months after Amber Spradlin was murdered, there has been no arrest. I applaud the family for their restraint because it has to be hard to get on there every day and read the different theories and my own theories and opinions. The 911 calls that were made from McKinney's home went to the dispatch for the Prestonsburg City and they deemed the first call not to be an emergency. The second call they did send someone out as an emergency even though he says to them, this lady's already dead. She's laying here dead. The emergency response should have come from the first call. And that's my opinion and seems to be the opinion of the, the, the public. Hopefully the next video that I'd make and the next follow-up that I do on this case will be to show that an arrest has been made. Once that happens... The family has all confidence that it's coming very soon, so maybe the state police is talking to them privately. Maybe the prosecutor's talking to them privately about what's coming and when to expect. And I don't know, but once that happens, um, the next steps will be to start ironing out all the details, and maybe the 911 call will then be released. I don't know. But I'll just say this. I'll leave on this note. The, the public stands by the family, the Amber Spradlin family, and we're all waiting right along with you. We're hoping for justice to be served. Um, all this boy, uh, what, is it, what is it called, the good old boy system that's been mentioned, this one knows that one, and they all went to college together and they're all buddies they play golf together they all hang out together they're they're married to someone's sister 
someone's wife is, you know, the sister-in-law of the police chief and this, that, and the other. This is the reason why so many people in this area are so up in arms about this because this McKinney and his family are well-connected, well-known, and well-to-do, so to speak. Had this been some regular everyday person, working class, um, not connected to anybody, not well known, no ties to any law enforcement or government, what would have been the difference here? Would, would the police have gone out that morning to check this out? Or would they have made an arrest very quickly? Or at least brought people in for questioning, but I'll say this. Um, the fact that he called Keith Bartley that morning to ask for an attorney or to ask for... And, and why did he need to do that? Why did he need to call Keith Bartley? He's a dentist. He's a business owner. I'm sure that he had done work with attorneys before. Was he not divorced? Did he not have an, a divorce lawyer? Um, could he not have called up any lawyer in the phone book? So why Keith Bartley? That's the big question here. I appreciate everybody for watching. I apologize if, if a lot of this is just my own thoughts and theories, but I, I just, you know, I'll do an update as soon as something more is posted. Thanks for watching.